Hello, in this video, we're going to look, take a look at another heap challenge. This one is called Tcash Tier from Ponable.tw. So I haven't looked at this challenge yet. We're going to be solving it together. Hopefully it will be straightforward. This is 200 points. Uh, the description here is make Tcash great again. We have a port to connect to and the binary as well as the library. So I've already copied the binaries uh, to my machine. And we can see that the libc that's used here, you can just run it. Uh, we can see that it's version 227. So this is a relatively, currently it's an old version of libc, but uh, lots of Linux machines probably still use this version. My uh, WSL actually uses libc227. This is perfect because I don't have to change any of the interpreter paths for this binary. I can just use my uh, the library on my machine. Um, and the source code I've also pulled up here. This is for libc227. Um, it's the malloc.c file that pretty much contains all of the um, malloc and free uh, routines that we're going to need um, for the heap challenge. So the first thing I'm going to do, of course, is open this up in IDA um, so we can take a look at what exactly is happening here. So let's open IDA. OK, so we need to use the 64-bit version. Right, yeah. OK, so if we look at this program, let's jump to main. OK, so this is a very typical heap setup where we have a menu and we have a bunch of options that we can take. So let's take a look at the decompilation. So here's the decompilation. Let's uh, look at this first. So this function looks like it just sets up the uh, buffering for the standard um, file descriptors. And we also set a handler for this signal, which uh, looks like it's probably a alarm handler. So let's look at Let's search signal and let's tab through till we get to sig alarm. This is for 64-bit uh, uh, Unix. So this is exactly what we're looking for. And the alarm is run for 60 seconds. So of course, you know, if we want to uh, see how this works, we can just look at the manual pages for alarm. And we can see that in the man page, alarm arranges for a sig alarm signal to be delivered to the calling process in uh, the argument seconds, right? In this case, we are setting the timer to 60. So this is going to be one minute. And then it's going to trigger this handler. So the handler here uh, just prints timeout and we exit. So of course, you know, since we're going to be automating this, um, we should be OK in terms of meeting this um, alarm or this timeout condition here. Uh, so yeah, this is just uh, like a setup function. So after we set up, we print a uh, name. And I'm not sure why printf here takes two arguments. Um, but yeah, this is just some decompilation uh, business here, I guess. And then what we're doing is, okay, so we have something else here. We are setting v3 to this guy, which looks like some uh, some array in the uh, BSS or uninitialized data section. So let's see. So okay, so that's 40 bytes. Okay. So then, what are we doing here? So okay, we're taking this and we're calling this function. Okay. So it looks like the binary is prompting a name, and then we are reading something. Uh, and then after that, we are taking, so this is the number, let's say, n bytes red. Okay, 
And of course, if this is if the return value is negative, then there is an error. Um, otherwise, what happens is okay. So we take in bytes read um, minus one plus a one. A one here is this uh, buffer. So let's just call this. Uh, this is probably name. So let's just call this name. And so a one is just some buffer. Uh, so essentially, this is going to um, this is going to point to the last, or this is a pointer to the last uh, character that was read. Yeah. So we can do something like this. So here we have check if the last character is a new line. Right then, uh, we're gonna basically set that to a null byte, right? Basically to terminate it with null. Um, otherwise, we just uh, return here. And I don't think the return value is actually used. Um, so yeah, so it's uh, yeah. So this function here just reads, and it looks like it calls recheck. So this is probably the um, size that we're gonna read. In this case, we're going to read 32. Recall that our buffer here is size 40, so there's no not really any overflow issue here. Um, but let's just call this read buff. Okay, and then we initialize some local variable to zero. Let's say that this here is name pointer. So this points to name. And we see that it's used down here as well. So what happens here? Okay, so this just prints a menu. As you can see, we have four options. We can allocate, we can free or delete. We can probably get some info or print something, and then we can exit. So this is print menu. Um, yeah, so uh, we have kind of like an infinite loop here, just basically repeating this over and over. So what happens here? Well, um, okay, so this, okay, what is happening? So this is a cannery, not important for us. Um, this is not even used. So it reads from, okay, this is standard in. Um, and it reads into this thing here, okay, and it reads this much. So let's put this input, okay. and then it uses a call. So we can look at the manual page for this. So this converts a string to an integer. So, um, right. So result here will be the uh, the converted input. So the input here will be a string, but then we'll get the number here. And so that's what it does. So this essentially just uh, reads an option from the standard in. Okay. And then, and then we basically parse based on this option. So if option is not equal to two, then we're going to break. So that will jump out of this while loop. And okay, so it basically jumps to here, right? Um, okay. And so this is okay. So we, we so if op equals to, then we get to here, this point. Uh, and then we compare this variable with seven. If it's less than or equal to seven, then we perform these options. Otherwise. We skip. So if we look at the menu here, two is to free or delete. So we do have a free here, but then we increment this. So this is some sort of counter. Um, so it's initialized to zero, and we only can perform this action a total of eight times, right? Because we're incrementing every time, and we uh, only perform this action if counter is less than or equal to seven. So. Yeah, so we only have, can only delete eight times. 
Okay, so this might be a little bit restrictive, um, especially in most uh, heap challenges, we don't really have a, a limit to how many times we can free. Um, but yeah, this might be interesting. So, okay, so then what happens is, oh, we actually reset this. So maybe let's just call this a, let's just call this temp. It doesn't look like it's um, used. So we have another, okay, so this value is set to pointer, which is another uh, entry in the BSS section. Oh, okay, so this basically, yeah, frees that pointer. Okay, so if it's not equal to two, if opt is equal to three, so what is three again? It is two, okay, so three is info. So if it's equal to three, then we go here. So let's just name this here info. What does info do? It prints name and then it writes to standard out 32 characters at this. So remember, we got to initialize this here. Okay, so that doesn't seem too interesting, too useful because essentially that's just printing out what we put in, right? Yeah, not sure what uh, what that does, but you know that could be uh, could be useful. If the op equals four, that just exits, right? Um, and otherwise, we print invalid choice. And okay, if op is not equal to one, then we jump to here. Otherwise, we go here. So what does this do here? Let's take a look. So this prints size and then it reads, okay, maybe this is, maybe we should say read num uh, because this looks like, so this is the requested size. And if the requested size is less than or equal to two, and so, so less than essentially hex 100, then we malloc the requested size. Okay, so this is where we allocate. Um, let's call this alloc. And then we read into this pointer uh, size minus hex 16 or hex, uh, oh, sorry, 16 or hex 10. So for example, if we requested 24, then we would only read eight. So actually this kind of really strictly prevents overflow here, um, which is a good thing, uh, not necessarily efficient because essentially now we'll have uh, a lot of inaccessible data in chunks, but you know, this effectively does prevent um, overflows within the heap chunk. And then we print done and return. Okay. That's pretty much the entire binary. Um, yeah, again, it's just a pretty typical uh, heap um, implementation. So what uh, are things, some things we can notice here? The first thing that I notice here is that the request size can't be greater than hex 100. What this means for us is that all of our requests that we get through this um, binary are going to be from are going to be in tcache size chunks, right? Because the largest uh, tcache, I believe, is hex four ten. Um, yeah, I think that's right. Um, and obviously, that's way larger than uh, hex one hundred. So yeah, all of the um, requests will be from tcache. So uh, we'll never really be able to free one of these chunks directly to um, to say unsorted bin. And especially this is true because if we look at the free here, um, we can only free a total of eight times, right? And if you know how the tcache works, the tcache can only hold up to seven chunks. So in order to free to unsorted bin, we would have to free seven times and then we'd have to free an additional time to uh, to get it into uh, unsorted bin. You know, so if we were trying to get a libc leak, we'd have to do something like this. Then we'd spend all of our eight frees uh, just to get the leak. So obviously this is not a, um, a viable solution. All right, so it seems like there's a lot of restrictions here. So the way to exploit this is uh, to note that, or well, the vulnerability, first of all, is 
uh, is essentially a double free to tcache, right? Because uh, we know that in libc227, there's no check for double frees uh, to tcache. Uh, tcache is essentially, it's essentially unprotected. I mean, there are some small protections. Um, there's not even an alignment check for tcache, I think. There's no size check in 227 for tcache. Um, so yeah, the essential strategy is to double free. Um, and th this is also viable here because after we free the pointer, it's not cleared, right, in memory. So, uh, you know, it, even though we free it, right, we still have the pointer there and we could free it again. And there's no, there's no checks for that. So that's, that's really bad. Uh, yeah, so then what is the strategy? Because we know we can't free directly to unsorted and we do need a libc leak in order to um, overwrite, say, free hook with, uh, with system, right, to get a shell. So the strategy here, I think, is we can use the fact that, um, so the important thing, right, is the only leak that we get is from here. Uh, and this is not even a useful leak because it's essentially just this BSS section, right? It's, it's not even like, we don't, we don't even see the contents of the, uh, uh, of the heap, right? There's no way to print that stuff. So, with here, it's nice because um, uh, we we print this uh, we print this area in the BSS section, but the problem is now we have to actually get a chunk here, right? And not only that, we have to get a large chunk here so that when we free the chunk, a fake chunk here, it will land up in the unsorted bin. So how in the world do we get an unsorted chunk? in the BSS section that we can legitimately free. So that's a good question, but um, but note that this arbitrary write that we get from Tcache is extremely powerful. Because not only does it allow us to poison the Tcache to get a chunk, you know, wherever in memory we want, but we can also use it to craft, uh, to build our fake chunk, right? So for example, what I'm thinking is something like this, where Right, so we have the name in the BSS, right? And where is this at? Let's see. So name is at 602060. So if we can create a fake chunk here, right? So this is basically 6020 is here, right? And let's say we have a huge chunk here. So like 420, 421, just to say that the previous chunk is in use. Um, okay. And then we, you know, we actually create this fake chunk. So we'll have, you know, some data here. Doesn't really matter, right? Um, one point to note here is that we do have this pointer at 602088. So this is 60, 70, 80. So you know we'll have some more data here, but then we'll have this you know pointer. We want to make sure that this is kind of intact. But then you know we'll have a bunch of other data, but then at the end here we can essentially say we can have a, you know, we're going to have a chunk, let's say of size 21, that's basically saying that this chunk is in use, right? Because this one bit means that this chunk is in use. And then when we free this chunk here, it will be free directly to unsorted bin. So the question is, what is the address of this guy here? And that's easy because we know that uh, we just have to add hex 420 to, to this address, which is uh, 602060. So if we do the math there, it will be uh, 602480. Yeah, that should be right. So this is the address essentially of this. <sighs> okay. Um, okay, good. And one thing we have to worry about here is also that yeah, let's try this first and see, see what happens. So we're just going to craft this fake chunk. So the way we're going to do that is first, we're going to get a fake chunk here by poisoning the tcache. We're going to write these two values. 
Um, initially, we get to write uh, some bytes at the name. So we can go ahead and use that opportunity to basically fill in this part here, as well as this uh, 420 size. Yeah, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, We're gonna, for now, we're just going to uh, do this. So, okay. Seven. Oh, what am I doing? This should be ellipsy, right? Let's uh, process and do the cache here. All right. And here we can go ahead and set a breakpoint so we can watch our keep. We'll just set it at this. Oh, is pi enabled? No, pi is not enabled. So we can tell that because these addresses start with this next 400,000. Uh, um, yeah, so let's break here 400C6B. Okay. So I'll exploit go here. The first thing I'm going to do is just uh, write some functions to help us manage the uh, communicate with the process a little bit easier. So um, first thing we want to do is flush. So flush is just going to receive and it's going to throw away all the stuff until we get to this colon. Okay, and. Then we're going to define a menu. So what menu is going to do? Um, so let's do send number as a line. Okay, so we're going to convert this to bytes with eight string in. So we're going to flush because um, the menu will always print. Yeah, your choice. So that will work. And then we're going to send num line opt and return. First option we have here is to allocate. And when we allocate, we need to know the size and the data. So we're going to assert here that size is greater than zero. And that size is less than hex 100. And we're going to trim the data so that um, we, can, we, we only read up to size hex minus hex 10. Um, We'll do that, and then we're going to uh, do a menu one. So that will select option one. Then we're going to send uh, flush first. Send num line uh, size. 
flush. And we're gonna send beta. Okay. All right. The next thing that we can do is free. So I'm gonna call this delete, just to not confuse it with the actual glibc free. And we don't need to pass anything to this, right? Because um, because here we can see that as long as you know that's good, then there's uh, as long as we don't free more than eight times, then we're good. We can actually implement that ourselves here as well. Here is num free. Or let's say counter just to match our Ida here and zero. So, so if counter uh, is greater than or equal to eight, so let's say it's equal to eight, um, assert false. Uh, too many fees. Again, we don't really need to do this as long as we keep track of it ourselves. But you know, if we do accidentally uh, call this too many times, then it, it's nice to have it, you know, in Python rather than in uh, trying to figure out what happened there. Uh, yeah, but then if this is fine, then you just do menu two and that's it. Just return. Next one was info. It also doesn't take any arguments. It doesn't read anything. Um, so select menu three, and we're going to flush. Yeah. And flush, and then it's going to write 32 characters. So we're going to read. So after flushing this, we're going to read 32 characters. So return p dot receive um, twenty. All right, and we're of course going to also uh, have a function that triggers the breakpoint. Select menu option four. Okay, so this pretty much sets up our interactions with the. Uh, with the binary. So now let's try to do some of these things uh, in terms of the exploit. So again, the first thing we want to do um, is to leak libc. That's our first goal. Okay, so in order to do this, again, we need to um, yeah, we need to uh, kind of craft something like this. So the first thing we want to do is, of course, set the name because it's going to ask us the name. Let's flush first. And let's set up the fake chunk. So, uh, so we're going to send. So we're going to send. Uh, let's just send some funny stuff. Dead beef. Right, 421. Let's set up the fake chunk, and let's just go ahead and say zero here. Uh, in case that we allocate this as a tcache, which we will do. So we're going to poison the tcache with this chunk, and notice that even though the size of this chunk is 421, libc227 does not even check that. Um, so it will allocate gladly. It will happily allocate this chunk for us at this fake area and then when we free it it will you know have this different size which is perfectly okay with libc uh, which is really bizarre okay so now um, uh, what we'll do is let's just allocate uh, size let's say x28 One. So this will be from the heap, and of course we're going to double free, or I think I called it delete. 
this will double free that. And then now we're going to poison the TCAR. So the way that this works is we're going to alloc um, x28 again. And then this time we're going to write the location where we're going to write to next time. So, you know, we're going to, we want to write to here, right? So uh, 602480. Uh, to make this a little bit easier for us, we can we can hard code this in here. So, um, aim is 6020. Let's see. 60. Okay. So, we're going to do uh, we're gonna poison it with name plus x420. And this will essentially allocate at the bottom here, just like we mentioned. Um, okay, and then we're going to allocate again. This will return the same uh, chunk, right? Because the forward pointer of this initially is just itself. Uh, but now we've poisoned it so that the next time we allocate, it's going to be uh, to the, that chunk at the very bottom um, of the BSS section. So now we can allocate number 28. Uh, and here we can write a cafe babe. And we're just going to create a fake chunk here, size x21. Uh, this one here just is important because it shows that the previous chunk is in use. And let's look at what the heap looks like here. So, all right, let's run this and see what happens. Let's continue. Oh, what happened? Oh, let's try that again. Not sure exactly what happened there. Okay. Be fine this time. So we hit the breakpoint. Uh, let's examine twenty uh, the, uh, quad words at. Okay, so what happened here? Um, it looks like this is a legitimate chunk. Um, is it actually allocated? It is, I think. 602480. Oh, so this points to the bottom, right. Um, let's look at a lot more than this. Let's do 200. Okay, perfect. So if we look at this, uh, this is this looks like a legitimate chunk, right? Uh, we have hex 421. If we add 420 to this, we should get the address that we put here for uh, 602 480, right here. And this would be like the next chunk, which is hex uh, size of hex 21. The prev in use is set, which means that this um, current chunk is in use, so that when we free it, we're all go we're going to be all good. Um, good. So now let's tr just try to free this chunk and see what happens. Uh, so again, right, this is not even the heap, this is the BSS section, but we kind of crafted a fake chunk here so that we can kind of uh, uh, hopefully get a libc address whenever we free this. All right, let's free. And let's see what happens. So, continue. Oh, what happened? Free. Oh. Okay, so we tried to free this. Oh, okay. Right, okay, so actually we need to get our um, chunk to be up here first. Okay, that's, I think that's easy enough. Uh, we can just allocate. Um, yeah, let's just allocate. Um, let's do another double free. So these will come from the actual heap. So now we're going to poison with 
n plus x10. And uh, yeah, so the next time we alloc, it's going to be at our big chunk. So that should write this data there. Before we delete, let's just uh, look at what the heap looks like. All right. So let's continue. Okay. Um, okay. So let's see if we did this successfully. Okay. So it looks like we did. Um, this looks like they ask you for fake chunk, just at first glance. Uh, good. So just looking at this chunk, it looks pretty good. And now if we look at our pointer, <laughs> which again is part of this chunk now, it's pointing to here. So our chunk is indeed here. So now we can free it. All right, let's do that. We're going to delete. And hopefully this will put this chunk in the unsorted bin. Um, okay, what happened? Corrupted size versus previous size. Oh, that's strange. Let's look at the glibc source code. Okay, so there are three instances of this error. Let's uh, take a look at each one first. So the first is in unlink, unlink chunk. And it's if the chunk size is not equal to the previous chunk size. Uh, okay, so if we look here, the size of this chunk is hex 421. And the perf size Wait, but this chunk is in use, so um, so the size shouldn't matter here. So why are we getting this error? Mm, let's look at the other ones real quick. So it wasn't this error because this would have while consolidating. Okay, and that is not... Okay, so it, it definitely came from this line here, 1629. Um, okay, so what calls unlinked chunk? Let's look at the backtrace real quick. Okay, so int free. Okay, 53, 50. Um, hmm, strange. Forty-three ninety-five. Well, I'm wondering if this is not even the right C version. Thirty-one twenty-four. Yeah, this might not be the right one. Uh, hmm. So why are we getting corrupted size? Okay, let's go back to here and let's see what calls unlinked chunk because I I'm pretty sure it comes from here. Okay. So we are not allocating from, so there's nothing, yeah, there's nothing here in small bin yet. Um, I don't think it's from here. Maybe it is during here. Oh, okay. Okay, I think I know what's happening. So if you look here, um, we're going to try to consolidate forward, if not next in use. So where's next in use? Next in use is in use bit at offset next chunk. Oh, okay. Yeah, so what's happening here is if we look at this heap, um, it's going to check whether this next chunk, which is what I called hex 21 in size, if this is in use. So if we look at this chunk and we go to the next um, chunk here and look at the in use bit, it's clearly zero, which means it's not in use. 
So then what it tried to do is it tried to unlink this, but notice that the prev size here is, um, is zero, so where, whereas it should be hex 20 if you know the previous size is not used. So a way that we can easily fix this is just to say that this chunk is in use, right? So we, we would have to uh, create another fake chunk here, um, essentially that has the prev use bit set to one. Okay, so the way that we can do that is like this. Um, so if we look at here, we have to write some more data. And then we could do another 21 here. And this prevent use will basically prevent this from being consolidated. So where would this go? This would go here. Okay, but we're gonna need a lot more than hex 28 now because we have to write, um, we're gonna have to write hex 30. So let's request hex 48 then. Because the program itself is gonna decrement hex 10. Okay, so now we have to write this. Uh, let's do add food. Okay. Uh, let's do baseball. Right. And one more. I'm not really good at coming up with these. I'm just going to use debut again and x21 okay so good so now what this will do is put that fake chunk there and this should work so let's try it out and see what happens okay so let's examine again 200 quad words And let's see. Okay, so we can see that it was successfully freed, right? This is essentially the uh, address of a of the unsorted bin in libc. We can tell this because in libc 227, it's always uh, ca0. And of course, it's doubly linked, so we have this. And also note that um, these two fields were also cleared out. So our pointer here um, is set to zero, right? Even though it should be pointing to here. Yeah, okay. So, um, and then notice now that um, here, this hex 21 originally is now set to hex 20, which indicates that this chunk is not in use. And indeed, you can see that libc wrote the, the size of this chunk in this field here. So that's correct. And of course, here's our uh, values that we wrote. Okay, so now it's easy because we can just obtain the leak by by calling info, right? So let's do something like this first. So we're going to do untax64 uh, info. And before we do that, let's see what it's going to print first. So uh, let's write info here. It's going to write starting a name, um, but remember the offset of the pointers is going to be a hex 10. So let's do hex 10 to hex 18, say. Uh, and then we're going to log info this. So I know this is not the actual libc address, but we're going to use this to essentially calculate the offset of the unsorted thing. Let's run this and continue. Okay, so notice that we got the leak right here, um, which is exactly here, which is exactly the same thing that we saw earlier, um, which is this field, right, at offset 10. So now to calculate uh, the offset, we can just look at the info product mappings. And the address of libc is here, 
and notice that this was the leak. So we just have to subtract this from that, or sorry, this from this to get the uh, offset. And so we can see that everything is the same up to the last six nibbles here. So this is 400,000 and we see we here we have seven EBCA0. So the offset is three EBCA0. Okay. So let's um, define this. Um, EBC zero. Now we can subtract sorted, and now this should give us the correct libc address. Okay, so if we see the libc here, it's a seven F seventy six. To be 400,000, and we see that exactly that is what we have here. Okay, so the leak is good, and now the rest is really easy. Uh, we just need to double free poison tcash with uh, free hook and overwrite with system. Before we do that, let's see how much, um, how many frees we've used up already. So this is one, two, three. Four, five. So I have three more. Um, okay. So um, okay. So let's allocate hex twenty eight. And this will be allocated from uh, right from the fake chunk here because we have this huge chunk that just got freed, so it will just be carved from here. But we have to make sure, be careful that we uh, we don't overwrite pointer, right? So if we have hex twenty eight. Um, uh, so the chunk size here will be. 30, yeah, and that should be fine. And of course, we can always check that later as well. So, chunk three, located at uh, essentially name. Um, and let's just see what happens here first. So, let's continue. Okay, good. All right. And indeed, we see that uh, we're all good, right? The next, uh, the pointer is safe. <laughs> it's inside of our chunk. Um, and, you know, the next, uh, we essentially create this last remainder chunk, right? That is, uh, we can see that it's uh, linked to the unsorted bin. And now the size is hex 3 f 0 Good. So uh, now we can, again, do a double free. So this will be number 6 will be number seven. Okay, so we only have one more, and that's just perfect, I think. So now we're gonna poison the tcache with ipsy.symbol rehook. Um, and then we're gonna alloc again. This will be allocated from the same place as this chunk here. And the next time, this will be allocated at rehook. So what are we going to write there? Well, obviously we want to write system. And let's check if that's the case. So we're going to run and let's examine one the x at free hook. Aha, so we overwrote with system. And now is the fun part, right? We just simply free a chunk that has been SH in it. So we're going to allocate one more um, chunk. And what's the size going to be? Well, you can't really, we can't use uh, hex 28 anymore because the tcache is all messed up now. But we can just use something random like hex 38. Um, NSH, 
Right, and now uh, we free this with one with none left to spare. Okay, and this should give us a shell. So let's try it out. Aha, so we got Ben Dash and let's uh perfect. Okay, so we got a shell. Exit and let's exit. So now let's do this for real. Let's attack the actual target here. All right. Oh man, this is really slow. So let's just wait for it to finish. Oh, perfect. Okay, so we got um, a shell. Okay, let's see if that maybe it's in home. Ah, uh, there's the flag. All right, and let's exit out of here. So we got the flag right here. T cache is easy for you. Let's put it at the bottom here, and let's also submit it on the site. All right, and we got the correct flag. Okay, so hopefully that was um, informative. Um, it's kind of a unique tcache challenge. So essentially the uh, the problem here, as with any tcache, is that we don't clear the pointer from memory and this allows for double free. Once we have double free, we have arbitrary write and using arbitrary write, we can kind of do this uh, creative override where we fake this chunk in the BSS section um, and using this fake chunk in the VSS section, we can free directly to the unsorted bin um, to give us a leak, basically to set Y and Z equal to the unsorted bin pointer in libc. That will give us a libc leak. And from there, we just do a very typical uh, tcache poison and write to free hook. Uh, and that's how we get the shell. Okay, so uh, again, I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.